Hey guys, the 10 meter band is on fire right now. And I heard a lot of people over the summer going, wow, this uh, solar cycle 25 isn't what they're saying it is because 10 meters is dead here in the middle of the summer. Well, let me tell you something, 10 meters is pretty much always dead in the summertime. And I'll give you a rundown of why. I wanna give you some characteristics of the 10 meter band and tell you when to use it, when not, and why it's such a mysterious band. Stick around. is such a cool band because it's it's got the characteristics of hf because it is an hf band but it has a few similarities to vhf and some of the characteristics of that you know as i, I said at the beginning of the video the people are going wow 10 is dead still and it's the you know we're climbing up and uh going up in the solar cycle 25 why why is 10 not it's nothing this summer yeah like i said it's usually not What's going on there, it happens every summer, it's called blanketing or absorption. And what happens is the earth is tilted towards the sun in the northern hemisphere at prolonged periods of time. And those UV rays really ignite the, uh, the ionosphere, as we all know, the, the different parts of the ionosphere, the, the D, the E, the F1, the F2. But what happens is, is that the, it, the reason it's called blanketing, because the D or the E layer gets so charged up that it almost forms a blanket over the earth. And with that said, HF signals have a hard time going through this and hitting the F layers for skip. So that blanketing kind of hurts HF, um, you know, pro propagation in the summertime, especially the 10 meter band. The 10 meter band is just, it's a, it's a mess. But as I said earlier, the 10 meter band also takes on some characteristics of, of VHF as well, you know, like 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 Tropo and and for that matter Aurora and uh, and Sporadic E. As a matter of fact, Sporadic E is a lot like you know. I remember years ago, my son was a, a teenager. We were riding down the coast of Delaware, and um, and we had and we were tuning the FM radio around, and my son was looking for a station. We got this station; it was crystal clear. And then all of a sudden, they ID'd they were in Minnesota. I was like, wow. And then, uh, so he goes, well, that's crazy. Maybe it's a rebroadcast. So he switched the dial to another station, and it was in Minnesota. And I was I had to explain to him, because I knew what was going on, that what we were experiencing was sporadic E. Well, this happens with the 10-meter band as well. And uh, the 10-meter band sporadic E happens around the same time. It's usually late June. And then that week between Christmas and New Year. So just right at or right after both the uh, the, the summer and, and the change to summer and the change to winter there, you know, as the uh, as the earth is tilted to its max one way or the other. So that affects it greatly. 10 meters, though, when it's open, it, it is, I mean, it's such a wonderful thing. And the best time is like right now. I know as I'm making this video, it's early October. October is one of the best DX months for HF and especially 10 meters because as the earth is is in its equinox and, and up like it does in fall and in spring, you know, it, it, things are great from both sides. So you can really make some great contacts on 10 meters, both the southern hemisphere and the northern hemisphere. It, it's kind of a, a, a great time. You know, one of the things about 10 meters, though, you'll notice using 10 meters is that it, let's just say where I'm at in the United States. Earlier in the day, when 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 I'm when 10 meters opens here, it's usually for me two east of me, which is, which be which would be Europe. Then as the middle of the day goes on, DX for me is down south, straight down to like to South America, and then it, later in the afternoon, later in the day, in this daytime band over towards you know the Pacific. I mean, my, I think one of the greatest DX contacts I ever made was. To, to New Zealand, you know, and that was, uh, for me, it was late afternoon. It was morning for him there as we were both in the, you know, t the daylight and 10 meters was open for both of us. You know, another thing that happens on 10 meters, I got some notes here I'm looking at that uh, that happened to me just the other day. I I'll, I'll, I'll do a quick clip from this. It was in a video that I, that I just did um, recently, though. But um, what happens, it's called, it's TEP, T-E-P-R, 
uh, trans-equatorial propagation, or some people call it ATEF or afternoon trans-equatorial propagation. And what happens there is instead of the the signals skipping as normal HF signals do off the uh, F2 layer back down the earth, back up the F2 layer back down the earth, with, with the trans-equatorial thing, the signal goes up and then kind of takes a weird hop over in the kind of a, a normal a, a normal part of the uh, F2 layer and then skips straight over, hits the F2 layer again and back down, usually about equal distances uh, above and below the equator. This happened to me just just like a few days ago when I made a uh, contact down to um, Argentina to uh, LW2DO. And in this, I looked at it, if you, I looked at it on the map, and um, our distances from the equator were almost identical. I, it's crazy. And our, I looked at, at the globe itself and what was going on. And we're I'm at 36 degrees north, basically, and he's at 36 degrees south. So was this, you know, I was only using 20 watts. Was this a trans-equatorial propagation thing? I kind of think so. Here, listen for yourself. It's a pretty cool QSO there, and uh, like I said, that was a, a surprise for me just operating mobile, basically, static mobile with 20 watts, but uh, pretty cool, and I, and I believe that was the uh, type of propagation that I was experiencing. You know, propagation is my favorite part of the ham radio hobby. It really is. Cool thing about 10 meters, though, is that this is the one HF band where technician class, the entry-level class of U.S. hams, can get on voice SSB between 28.3 and 28.5 on there. But, you know, the, the band itself also has so much to offer. I mean, everything from CW to, you know, different modes, FT8, RIDI, um, SSTV. There's even some satellite comms in there. And something that's really cool, it's the one HF band where you really can see a lot of FM and FM comms in there. There's actually even uh, some FM repeaters here in the States that you can hit. So... It's a great band. It's going to be open now, like here in the Northern Hemisphere, pretty much through the fall, winter, and spring until we get back around to that hot summer month again when the earth is tilted back towards the sun and it kind of, kind of ruins things for us. But I really want to put this video out there for you guys, especially in newer hams. I, I get so many comments from newer hams like, man, I need to get my general so I can get on HF. That's cool, but you know what? You can get on HF right now. And if you're not into ham radio and you want to experience the excitement of long distance skip on HF, get your tech and get on 10 meters. Now is the time, and we got quite a few months going on. One of the things that also I like about uh, about 10 meters is that it, it doesn't take a big antenna. You know, the antenna lens required for, say, a dipole, or for that matter, uh, the antenna lens for a vertical are shorter. So if you want to experiment with antennas, like I love to do, and I'm getting ready to do a whole lot of on 10 meters, is that, you know, it's shorter, easier to build, even a, something high like a beam or whatever. But the other cool thing is, you know, CB antennas, CB is 11 meters. You know, CB antennas will pretty much work on 10 meters. You may have to trim them or whatever. But like a lot of times I work in portable. I like to just, I have some CB antennas and a magnet mount that I put on the roof of the vehicle or on the front of the car. And I can experiment with different types of mobile antennas, as well as that you can cut wires. I've made I've made a vertical dipole. It was so easy. Just cut a wire and, and, and put a vertical dipole straight up and down because it's so short. It was fun and I had a good time with it. So there's a lot of other antennas I want to experiment with that. I want to do a moxin by the sea. I think 10 meters is the way I'm going to do it. Beams and, and such. Anyway, just wanted to get you, uh, I want to get you excited about 10 meters. I want to see people out there, guys that you, you follow the channel and you say you're learning and, and you want to get out and experience HF, get on 10 meters, guys, because you want to know what? I'm going to be on 10 meters a lot here in the next few weeks and hope to see you out there. Anyway, until next time, I'm Walt, K4OGO73, my friends. Hope to see you soon on 10 meters.